What is going on everybody? Welcome back. Today we're going over the top 20 players, the top most popular, most collected players in vintage baseball from a dealer's perspective. Make sure to stick around to the end to see if you guys won the last video's giveaway, but let's get right to it. Now, I tried to put these in order as best as I could. I'm not saying these are the 20 best players of all time, although it's somewhat correlated, but these are the most popular, most collected players from my perspective. The cards that when I get, they're gone almost immediately. I thought this would be an interesting list. People have asked me to make videos like this, so I'm going to give it a try. Starting off first with some of the honorable mentions, the guys who just missed the cut. That's going to be Christy Mathewson, Walter Johnson, Jimmy Fox, and Duke Snyder. All of those guys were just missed the cut. Walter Johnson and Christy Mathewson, easily good enough to make this list. They just aren't as collected by most people because they're so far back into the pre-war, but if you are someone who collects pre-war, they would be towards the top of your list. The same goes for Jimmy Fox. I'd just say the 50s and 60s is more collected than that 30, 40s era that you would find Jimmy Fox in. And then Duke Snyder just barely missed the cut. You could probably throw him at number 20 if you wanted. Starting at number 20, we have a tie. This one, you could really go with either player. That's gonna be Bob Feller and Warren Spahn. Two of the best pitchers of all time and two insanely popular pitchers to collect from probably the most popular era of sports cards. Both these guys had great careers and anytime I get any Bob Feller card or Warren Spawn card, it almost immediately leaves my hands within the next week. Now at number 19, we're going with Roy Campanella, a position that's not very popular. Catchers typically don't get too much love in collecting. But because of how great a player Campy was and how great some of the teams he was on are, multiple time MVP, you can basically sell any Roy Campanella card that you come across. He also did not play that long, which kind of makes a little bit more demand for the cards that he does have. Number 18, we're going to Mr. Cub, Ernie Banks. I would say his rookie card is one of the absolute best looking cards of any year of all time. He's a super collectible player from that 50s and 60s era. He's on a super popular team. He used to sign a lot at card shows and stuff like that and was apparently a great guy. So he, he has a pretty good reputation in the hobby. Some of his later cards aren't worth too much because they were kind of more mass produced. You can still sell any Ernie Banks card that you get. And number 17, we're going to one of my favorite players, Stan Musial. Got a couple of his Leaf cards up there. Stan is another guy that just like Ernie Banks was known for having a great personality and being super welcoming to signing autographs, meeting fans, everything like that. And he comes from an era where it's tough to get your hands on some of his cards that 40s to 50s era. Another guy like Campy that doesn't have too many cards. So whenever you do get a Stan Musial card, even if it's one of his later years, that is a card that collectors are always trying to get their hands on. Number 16, we have Tom Seaver, one of the best pitchers of all time and extremely underrated for the caliber of player that he was. He's got a super tough rookie card in the 67 tops high numbers. And if it weren't for someone who was going to be on this list later, he would probably be the most collected pitcher of his era. Number 15, we have another pitcher. This one is going to be Sandy Koufax. Another guy on the list that had a pretty short career. Not a whole lot of cards for Koufax, but when he did play, all of his cards bring some significant value and you can sell them basically instantly. The Dodgers have a huge fan base and Sandy was one of the biggest stars on one of the most popular teams of all time. Just above Koufax at number 14, I'm gonna go with Yogi Berra, the highest ranked catcher on this list. Yogi Berra from the Yankees, almost any Yankees player is extremely collectible, but especially Yogi, double digit World Series rings, multiple MVPs, probably the greatest catcher of all time. Anytime you have a Yogi Berra card, people are always trying to scoop that up. Number 13, I'm going with Roberto Clemente. We're starting to get into the super, superstars right now. And that's exactly what Roberto Clemente was. Has his iconic 1955 Tops rookie card. And even if you have a third, fourth, fifth, sixth year Clemente, it's super easy to move. Always people asking for him specifically. You could argue he could be a little bit higher on the list, 
but it gets super tough once you get here into the top 10, top 12. And at number 12, we're going with Satchel Page. This guy, he doesn't have a whole lot of cards. Obviously, he just got the 49 Bowman and the 53 Tops, which makes it when you have one of those two cards, almost every collector is trying to get at least one Satchel Page card in their collection, and he's only got two options. So both of those will move extremely fast as soon as I get my hands on them. You just can't keep a Satchel Page card for very long. And from Satchel to another pitcher, we got Nolan Ryan, the highest pitcher on this list. What can you say about Nolan Ryan? He played for like 50 years. He's got a super iconic rookie card from maybe the most popular set of the 60s. One of the most popular sets of all time. Countless amounts of people doing an entire player run of Nolan Ryan. And he's just extremely popular. Any Nolan Ryan card you can get, people are going to love it. Number 10, a player with arguably the most iconic card of all time. Probably at least in the top two or three. That's going to be Hannes Wagner. A guy who doesn't have too many cards because of when he played. Obviously, he's got the T206 one of the most expensive cards in the world, but then he also has cards like the 1940 Play Ball or the 1948-49 Leaf. And you know a player is great and truly loved in the hobby when you can sell a card that's after their playing days. That 40 Play Ball and that 48 Leaf were not playing day cards, but even those you can't keep in whenever you get them. Lots of people just wanna have a Hannes Wagner card at all in their collection. One of the original five Hall of Fame inductees and one of the most popular players in the hobby, no doubt. At number nine, it's Hammerin' Hank Aaron. Over 700 home runs, one of the most iconic rookie cards of all time, the 54 tops. He played for an incredibly long time, like 22, 23 seasons, hit a bunch of home runs. And everyone's got to have at least one Hank Aaron card in there. I've sold Hank Aaron rookies. I've sold Hank Aaron's second years. I've sold Hank Aaron's final card. You can sell anything with Hank Aaron's face on it. Number eight, we're going with Ty Cobb. One of the best pre-war and just in general players of all time. He's one that just doesn't have very many cards at all. He's got the T206s, lots of tobacco era cards which almost makes him a little bit less collectible just because some people like to do mainly tops and on. But Ty Cobb, anyone who is open to buying pre-war cards, he is near the very, very top of their list. Number seven is going to be Willie Mays, another one of the greatest players of all time. Some people argue he is the greatest. And he's got a bunch of different cards, and he's a player that anyone who collects vintage tries to get a few Willie Mays cards in their collection, whether it be his rookie or just their favorite design with him on it. He spans from the early 50s all the way into the 1970s. So if you collect really any era of vintage baseball, Willie Mays is going to make it into your collection. Number six, we're getting into the heavy hitters now. This is going to be Lou Gehrig. Just not a whole lot of options if you want to collect Lou Gehrig cards. He's got some of the Gaudi, he's got a couple of those, and that's basically it. If you go into the 20s when he was just starting playing, there's hardly any cards, and if you want them, it's gonna be an absurd price. Probably not the card you sell the most often because of how rare it is to find, but when you find a Lou Gehrig card, good luck even posting it, because any Lou Gehrig card you post, even if you're just showing it off, people are gonna be messaging you trying to buy that card off of you. Number five, Jolton Joe DiMaggio. People always asking for a couple players from that kind of war era. You got Jolton Joe and the next guy on this list, absurdly popular with his 41 play ball or his 38 Gaudi rookie, or he's got even some cards from a little bit earlier, the Gaudi premiums, the giant ones. People love those awesome looking cards. He's got the cards, the leaf, so he's one that's a little bit more attainable than some of these guys that are incredibly rare, but everyone is trying to find a way to get at least one Joe DiMaggio card in their collection. And you probably could have guessed it, number four is going to be Ted Williams. Now Ted Williams, I just give him the slight edge over DiMaggio. He was probably a slightly better player, although DiMaggio played for the more popular team, it's really tough to separate these guys at all. That's why I had to put them right next to each other. 
but Ted Williams is beloved by almost everyone in the hobby. Doesn't have a ton of cards to choose from, so if you find even a late year Ted Williams, even some of his tops cards, those ones are super collectible and they sell like crazy. And number three is going to be Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson cards are absolutely on fire recently. Any Jackie Robinson card you can get your hands on, whether it be his rookie, all the way up to his 56 tops. He just doesn't have too many, but any Jackie card you get, people are always asking me for Jackie Robinson cards. And I don't know if I've ever gotten any more offers on a specific card than when I had his 49 Bowman. There was just messages coming in left and right trying to buy Jackie Robinson. Everyone wants a piece of him. He is one of the most collectible players in history, and he's one of the most and he's one of the most well-known American athletes of any sport in history. He just serves an incredible role in not only baseball, but just American sports history. And that's why I put Jackie Robinson so high, even above some of these greats. And we're here in the top two. Both these guys play for the same team. But number two, I'm going to have to go with Mickey Mantle. He had a long career, lots of options to choose from, incredibly popular decades, again, the 50s and 60s. And it seems like out of lots of the sets, in my opinion, he was given some of the most time put into his artwork, had some of the coolest designs on all of his cards, because even back in the day in the 50s and 60s, they knew Mickey Mantle was the most popular player, and they knew that people were going to collect his card. Probably more so than any other player, I get people asking me about Mickey Mantle. They don't even ask for specific cards. They'll just ask, do you have any mantles? And it could be any card from any of his playing days, and people will throw you an offer on it. You hear it all the time at card shows. People will go up to tables and say, someday I'm going to get a Mickey Mantle card. They don't say, I'm going to get his rookie. They don't say, I'm going to get his 52 tops. They just want a Mickey Mantle card any card that it is because he's so incredibly popular. And number one on the list, if you guys haven't guessed it already, it should be fairly obvious, Babe Ruth, the best baseball player of all time, doesn't have too many cards, but again, just like I said with Hannes Wagner, you can sell a Babe Ruth non-playing days card, which is how you really know a player is great. If you look at sets like the 1960 and 61 Fleer or the 61 Golden Press set, Babe Ruth is really one of the only cards that's generally ever worth that much. And sets like those are kind of what I use to help make this list. The big guys like Ruth, Gehrig, Ty Cobb, Hannes Wagner, those are the guys that you can sell out of those sets, the all-time great sets. And those are really the only cards out of those sets that carry much value. So that's how you know people truly love their cards. They don't care if it was a playing days Ruth. They don't care if he was retired 20, 30, 40 years ago. They just want a Babe Ruth card in their collection. And that's why Babe Ruth takes the spot at number one. All right, now it is giveaway time, everybody. This video is going to be this Ted Klazuski. Comment if you want a chance in the next video to win this 68 tops Al K line. I'll be giving him away at the beginning of the next video. Let's click the wheel and see who won. Good luck as usual to everybody. And let's see who's getting the Ted Klazuski Pirates card. Looks like it's going to be Hammer44. Awesome. Congratulations. I'll get you the Klazuski headed your way.